Now we're going to continue by getting into a better understanding of our linear equation. So at this point, hopefully you remember that this is the standard form for our linear equation where you know, the coefficient of the x tells us the slope of zero b, in this case zero two, tells us where this line crosses the y-axis. There are a couple more points that we want to discuss with this. We know that the slope of this line is 3 by looking at it. We also know that this line it has a positive tra trajectory, meaning that as it moves from left to right, the line goes up. We can tell all that by looking at this number. Since it's a positive, we know the line goes up as it goes from left to right. If it's a negative, we know the line goes down. So we know the slope is 3. And it crosses the y-axis at point zero, 2. So the y-intercept is at zero two. There's some carpentry work going on, so I'm trying to work around it. So if it gets to be too much, I'll stop and start all over. Now, let's say you didn't know, you weren't as informed as you are to know that this is the slope. So let's say you didn't know that. And so what is the slope? The slope is the, the number that tells you, if you were looking at just the first quadrant, quadrant one, it tells you how many spaces the line moves on X and how many spaces it moves on Y. So it tells you so much on x and so much on y. So this tells you it goes from left to right along the axis and then it goes up or down. So you have these two quantities that you're working with, x and y. So the slope tells you how far on x and how far on y. So it's this relationship between x and y that the slope is describing. So in this case, if the slope is three, it's telling you for every one unit that it moves on x, it moves three units on y. Because the slope is three over one as a fraction. So one, one step on x and three steps on y. So it goes one to the left, up three. One to the left, up three. One to the left, up three. So it's like a stair step. So this is y and this is x. So let's say you didn't know that, but you plotted two points. So let's do a, a ordered pair of two points. Just like we did at first, x, y. So you said, let's say we said x is zero. So if x is zero, y is two, because that's the y-intercept. Zero makes this two. So if this is one, that's five. One and five. So see, it's showing us, if you start at zero, you go to two. If you go one more space, you go to five. So that means three up from two. So let's say we had zero gives us one, that's point A, and we go one 
that gives us five. Two, three, four, five. Let B. So we know our line goes through like this. So it tells us if we're at zero for x, we're up two. If we go to one on x, our step is, is steep. We go up to five. So we go over one, up three more. So we go over one, up three. One, two, three. So if this is one, five, This is zero, two. You could tell me what the next point would be. So we have a staircase, if you use that example. We go one step here and three steps. So if we go one more step, we'd be out at two. And we go up three steps, that'll put us at eight. So if we went one more, that would bring us up to eight. So this is one, three, one, three. So it's a constant one over three up, one over three up. So this would actually be one, this would be two, two, and eight. So this point will be two, eight. And you could continue just going from there. This will be two, eight, it will be three, eleven, four, fourteen, and so forth and so on. So let's say you didn't know that this relationship existed. One, three, one, three, one, three, one, three. On this line. Now, a different situation, it wouldn't be one, three. It might be one, two, one, 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 eight. It could be anything, depending on how steep the line is. But if you didn't know the slope and you wanted to find the slope, but you knew two points, let's see, now we know three points zero, two, one, five, two, eight. The slope equals m is the slope. The slope can be found by taking y value of a point, subtracting the y value for this other point, divide by the x value for the second point, minus the x value for the first point. So now what does this mean? So let's say this is our y, our second point, y2. So this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So the y values are 8 and 5. The x values are 2 and 1. So if this is point number 1, let's say, and this is number 2, we could do it the reverse too. It wouldn't make any difference. It would be your choice. I'm only saying this is two because eight is bigger than five. So we take the second y value, which is eight, subtract the first y value, which is five. So we have eight minus five divided by the second, the second x value, which is two, minus the first x value, which is one. So it's two minus one. So 8 minus 5 is 3, 2 minus 1 is 1, so the slope is 3. That's only because we use the, the slope uh, ratio to find it, but you could tell that by just looking at it because you know better. So let's say we didn't use this as point 2. We use this as point number 1, 2, and this was number 1. So let's say this was instead two, and this was number one. So in this case, we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the second point, the y would be five. The first point, the y would be two. It would be five, take away two. 
And here the second x will be 1, the first x will be 0. So 1 minus 0. 5 take away 2 is 3. 1 take away 0 is 1. So the slope is still 3. Now here's a key point to write down so that you hopefully will never forget. Because the, when you take the test, they will always try to trick you with this. They'll say, what is the slope between A, well this was A, B, I didn't label this, so I'll label it C. So the question will be, what is the slope between point B and C, and how does that compare to the slope between A and B? That's a trick question, because once you have a line, the slope anywhere on that line is the same. So if, for example, they, the question was, the slope between point A and, and point B is 3. The slope is 3. The question is, what is the slope between B and C? or B and D, or B and anything. So long as it's on that same line, the slope is always the same on that line. I don't care where the points are. Wherever the points are on that line, the slope is going to be constant. So don't let the test trick you into thinking. the test trick you into thinking that the slope is different at different places on that line. So just remember, the slope on any line is the same no matter where you point to on that line. It's a similar thing as when I told you that anything like x cubed raised to the zero power is one. Anything raised to the zero power is one. I don't care what it is. So these are trick questions that come to you because they're trying to find out how much do you actually understand about these concepts. So anything raised to the zero power is always one and any points on a given line have the same slope anywhere. So just write that down, put it in your notes, get it in your head, because you will see questions that ask you that. So you'll be able to answer them with no trouble. So I'm gonna clean this off and come back.